difficult, very difficult. Hey guys, have you been recently sorted into a house and been unhappy with the house that you got sorted into? Or has a hat gotten in between you and the girl that you like? Or do you just want to find out how that stupid old cap is actually placing people into the houses that they're put in? I, 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 was, I was just wondering if you put me in the right house. When it's clearly wrong so many times. Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at in this episode of Constant Review. How the sorting hat chooses your house and how you can guarantee that you get placed in the house that you're attending to. All right, so for a little quick catch up for you guys who may have been out of Hogwarts for a while, basically the experience and introduction into the wizarding world works like this. At the age of 11, students get off the Hogwarts Express to be escorted by a stranger they meet at a public platform that takes them on a boat across a frozen lake to a castle. After that, they get escorted inside to which a woman tells them that they're going to have a hat placed on their head that is going to tell them everything about the next few years of their life. In fact, that hat is going to have unilateral control on where they sleep for the next seven years. And because of the common room that hat puts them in, inadvertently actually chooses who their friends are going to be for those seven years. Which, let's face it, really screws over Severus Snape as he ends up in Slytherin and his crush, Lily Evans, ends up placed in Gryffindor, practically guaranteeing that they're not going to end up together. But what is it that the Hogwarts Sorting Hat uses in order to determine what house you should be in? So some of you may be thinking, this is really simple. We're given the impression that once the hat is placed on your head, it can read your mind and it knows everything about you. But that is absolutely not true. We know that isn't true because when the Sorting Hat is placed on Harry's head, Harry has to explicitly tell the hat that it does not want to be in Slytherin. And if this hat knows everything about Harry and can read his thoughts in his entire mind to know exactly who he is, why would he need Harry to tell him that he doesn't want to be in Slytherin? Shouldn't the hat already know that? So maybe the answer is a lot more simple than that. We know for a fact, because of the inner dialogue Harry has with the Sorting Hat, that the hat can hear Harry's thoughts. However, we don't have any reason to believe that it can actually see deeper into his character. Sure, the hat might be implying that it has the ability to read into people's very soul and be able to tell who they are inside, but as we know from every other time we see the hat, this hat is pretty cocky and seems to claim that he can do a lot of things that he can't do. In fact, the Sorting Hat claims that he has never once been wrong, and Let's face it, the Sorting Hat has been wrong many times. Hashtag Dumbledore is a Ravenclaw. So if the Sorting Hat can't actually read your soul, how is it deciding what house they go into? To find that out, we have to first look at what the Sorting Hat knows before the sorting ceremony begins. And for the most part, this is pretty easy. It's a fairly double-blind experience, as the students don't know the Sorting Hat before they see it, and the Sorting Hat has never seen the students before the first time they enter that great hall. It's at this point where the Sorting Hat deduces what house to put people in through a very controlled experiment. The Sorting Hat begins every year with a school song. And this song does the purpose of introducing the new students to all the four houses of Hogwarts. Also, while doing that, it mentions the key attributes of each of those houses so that first-year students hearing the song may be able to listen to it and pick up which house they feel like they most belong to. So since we know that each of these students has just heard the Sorting Hat song and now have that song on the forefront of their mind, the Sorting Hat can easily look into their mind and see which of those houses they're focusing on the most. In fact, it has two pieces of information, what house they're currently thinking of and what their name is. You ever notice that a shockingly high number of Hogwarts students seem to be in the same house as all of their family members? 
Clearly, the sorting hat isn't making an individual decision for each person, but in fact, is making a decision for an entire family at once. So when the sorting hat sees another member of the same family, its decision-making process is a lot simpler. Just put it where I put all the other ones. Ah, another Weasley. I know just what to do with you. Gryffindor! In fact, there are very few Muggleborns who attend Hogwarts at all, so this is a pretty safe way of really quickly sorting through them. In fact, since most Hogwarts students already know which house their siblings and their parents belong to, they can easily go into this knowing exactly which house they want to be in. In fact, we see pretty constantly that every character that knows which house they want to be in right away can get immediately sorted into their house, showing the Sorting Hat doesn't apparently spend any time deciding where they should go. But what about the ones that the Sorting Hat does spend time on? because those are the most interesting ones. So let's look at all the cases that we know of that the Sorting Hat needed a lot of time to decide what house they belonged in. So we look at Harry, Hermione, Neville, McGonagall, and Peter Pettigrew. These characters are very different and embody very different traits. We know that when Hermione was sorted, the hat was torn between Ravenclaw and Gryffindor. When Harry was sorted, the hat was torn between Slytherin and Gryffindor. McGonagall was also a toss-up between Ravenclaw and Gryffindor. Wormtail was a toss-up between Slytherin and Gryffindor. And Neville really wanted to be in Hufflepuff for some reason. But the one thing all of these characters had in common was at the time they were sorted, they didn't know what house they wanted to be in, or the house that they felt like that they related to the most. We know that Hermione was conflicted about whether or not she should be in Ravenclaw. And we know that Harry was conflicted because at the time he went into the sorting, he didn't feel any of those particular attributes at the time. So we can see really simply that it's not really the sorting hat that gets confused as to which house you should be placed in. Rather, it's you yourself who are unsure of where you belong. In fact, the ones who are most confident about where they belong, like Draco Malfoy, seem to get sorted within an instant. After that, it becomes up to the individual to prove to the hat that it belongs in a certain house. We have to remember that what determines the house that you're in is not your own aptitude or your personality. Instead, it's what you prize the most. It is not our abilities that show what we truly are. It is our choices. In fact, that's why Hermione is absolutely a Gryffindor. Hermione is always seen to be very intelligent and really cares about the pursuit of knowledge, always being in the library and always studying for tests. However, we know from the end of Philosopher's Stone that what Hermione actually prizes the most is loyalty and courage. Books, cleverness, and more important things. Friendship. And so, it's actually just that simple. Because the house that you get into is the one that you value the morals of the most, you pretty much guarantee that you will always end up in the house that you want to be in. So guys, when you get ready to get sorted, make sure you go in there with a clear head focused only on the house that you want to be in and really focus on the attributes of that house thereby guaranteeing that the Sorting Hat will place you exactly where you want to go. So did you end up in your dream house, or did you end up somewhere a little bit lackluster? Let me know how it goes, and as always, please like and subscribe, it really helps out a lot, and I hope to see you guys all in my next video. Take care guys, bye!